Hello everybody. So as we know, Formula One is taking a new calendar into next year with some interesting new tracks. So I decided to make the perfect calendar for the 2023 season. I take the CO2 emissions and weather also into consideration, but I'm not a professional, so please don't roast me in the comments if I put a circuit in at an odd time of year. Anyway, that being said, let's get into the video. So, the first circuit is Bahrain. I've chosen this to be the first circuit because it's a great first race, it's got good overtaking, it's generally fast paced, they use it for pre-season testing, so you can kind of get a feel for like how that if the teams have like progressed amazingly from pre-season testing and it just makes sense to have it early on in the calendar and it's in the center of the world so it's a good place to start so you can go anywhere you want so the second race of the season i've gone for saudi arabia because it's close to bahrain has good overtaking generally it's fast paced it shows us the pace of the cars in a straight line at the start of the season and it's just always fun to have a street race early on. For the third track, we've gone for Australia. Because it's traditionally at the start. It's a lot better since they've changed it. It's, rel it's like a connecting point from Saudi Arabia to where we're going next. And it's Danny Rick's home race. So we can't take it out of the calendar. After Australia, we've gone for Canada. Which... We've gone for it because it has good overtaking, has amazing history. Like, you've got the Ward of Champions. Like, you've got so many previous races there. You've got, like, and there's a ton of Canadian drivers in the past. Jacques Villeneuve, world champion. Jao Villeneuve. And then we've got um, the two. We've got Goat Tifi and Lance Stroll in the sport at the moment. So, it's, a, it's like you can't really not have it in in the calendar and it has amazing weather variation and all the drivers really like it so that's why Canada's in here. After Canada we're going to go to Miami because it's new and flashy, brings American support into the sport, has amazing overtaking sometimes. It depends on how well the cars follow. It was a bit difficult last this year because Red Bull straight line speed made it a bit tough for the Ferraris. But in, in general, it has some good overtaking. It brings in big crowds and it, it's close to Canada, so it's a good connection. Then we're going to go all the way into Europe and we're going to go for Germany. Because Germany has uh, Hockenheim, amazing history. It will be mixed home race because sadly Sebastian Vettel won't be here next year. It's a fast-paced circuit, and it, 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 I think Germany is a like a home center for cars, and it would just be wrong if they didn't have a Formula One race. So then we go south to Spain, and we've gone to Spain because it's Fernando Alonso's home race, it's Carlos Sainz's home race. Historically, Spain has had a circuit. Um, I mean, I know they've had Valencia, and not many people like Barcelona. But I think this year it was a very good race. I think these cars make Barcelona doable. And I, I, I think it, 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 you can't really not put Barcelona in your calendar. So then we have Austria. So the Red Bull ring, it produces really good races, really good overtaking. It's like fast paced. You know, like you could see all the people exceeding track limits this year because they were trying to keep the speed under control. And it's Red Bull's home circuit. Uh, it's got massive Orange Army support. And it can rain. The weather can change. And that just makes it so worthy of the calendar. So then we're going to go right next door to the Hungara ring in Hungary. Because it's a great race. It's a historic place. It's fast paced. And it, it can rain. You know, it's, the weather variations there. A lot of these Europe circuits will have weather variation obviously because they're all really close by so the climate will be really similar and then it's really similar for exactly the same reasons we're going to spa there's actually talk that they're not going to include spa and i think that's completely ridiculous because you've got history it's amazingly fast paced like the straights here i mean you've got Eau rouge radion like the bus stop chicane the variation in pace is incredible and obviously the weather here can change really rapidly, as we saw last year. Where it went from torrential rain in qualifying, and some people went from like 
mediums onto inters. It, it was it was very it was it it was a really interesting really interesting weather variation. So that's why we've included um, spa into the calendar. So then we're gonna go north to the Netherlands because it's fast paced. It's Max Verstappen's home race, so we can't not include it. It has really really good straights. Has a nice banking. It's just generally, it wasn't that interesting to watch last year, but it's in the calendar this year, so we'll see, I guess, we'll see. I mean, it, it'll be hard to tell if it will be a good race or not. Then we're going to go into the UK. It's a bit late in the year. We normally have this race slightly earlier, but it, it just suited well to fit in here. And it's Lewis, Lando and George's home race. Has amazing history, amazing overtaking, and as with everything else in Europe, it has a weather variation. So that's why it's on the calendar. And then, but it might not have such good weather variation at this time of year, but I guess, I mean, it is what it is. So then we're going to Monza, which has great, over, it just, it's the temple of speed. I mean, amazing overtaking, Ferrari Tom race, the Tifosi in general. And like, it can rain, but at this time of year, it's probably not likely to, but it could. I mean, you never know. Then we're going straight back across the pond to the to to America, we're going to Texas. It's Cota, amazing racing. It, we had boosting the U.S. support, which Formula One is keen to do, and so many straights. Like that that back straight is like so, it's incredibly long, which I think last year was a problem with dirty air, but this year of the cars following, I think we'll see some good overtaking in Cota. So that's why we've got Cota. Then we're going to go to Vegas because the sport's really keen on these American circuits. And I think Vegas will be boost US support, really flashy, looks like incredibly fast paced. I mean, we'll see, obviously we haven't raced there, so this is a bit of a, a scary one to put in the calendar. But I, I think I think I'll be safe putting this one in the calendar. Then we're going to go across to Japan, Suzuki. It's... Yuki's home race, which is a definite um, benefit. It was Honda's home race as well, but they've backed out of the sport. Uh, it's fast paced. It has really good history. You know, Senna and Prost, how they crashed there. I mean, it's just, it's it's a really good race. You can't, you can't really not include, you can't really not include it. I mean, it has, it's, it has support for the sport. It's, it's a solid race. Then we're gonna come across to Singapore, which has good ver weather variation. It's a street race, so that's just an added bonus. Really good qualifying. We've seen Vettel stay in the pits, not even doing a second run in Q3. We've seen Hamilton in the dry be 1.5 seconds up on everybody else. It, it, it's a really, really interesting race. The race isn't so good, but the qualifying's always there. And it's flashy, and, and it does have some history behind it. Not a lot, but it's there, so that's why it's in the calendar. Then we're going across... To South Africa, because it has, I mean, you've, it's, it, I think this will be the first African track that we have on the calendar, which is extremely important. It just expands the sport to a place it, it does it hasn't been. I don't know if it's ever been there, but it hasn't been there definitely since I've been watching the sport. It like African sports extremely important, but onto the circuit, it's fast paced, and it has amazing history. So they F one has raced at this circuit, but I don't know. If they've been anywhere else in Africa, but this circuit, yeah, they have raced that before, and it's a really good circuit. So, we've seen we've seen really good races here in the past, and that's why I think that is it'll be a really good race to just put on the calendar. So then we're going to Mexico because it's Checo's home race, has amazing st straights. That grandstand area where everyone's just looking down on on that chicane and the final corner is always so cool. And it just has so many cool, sh good straights for overtaking. So then we're going to Brazil because it's an amazing race. Always so much overtaking with Hamilton's last, the first last year. Uh, good weather variation as we've seen. Hamilton 2008 winning the title based on wet. So though he was going to win it and then it rained and it, it, looks, it looked like it was all going wrong. But he ended up winning it nevertheless. And lots and lots of not only th there is i'd say three three straights but i don't know if the third one really counts as a straight to be honest but the main straight is so long 
and it's just it, it could really like the the toe down the straight is really amazing and then we're gonna finish the season in Abu Dhabi because it's a dramatic final it's really flashy and it's been like this since 2009 but then they went off it from 2011 to 2013 but since 2014 every year the final has been at Abu Dhabi so that's why we've chosen it and I think I think it's a really good way to end the season so anyway that's our that's our perfect calendar hope you enjoyed like and subscribe and we'll see you next time